Are you looking for ways to stretch your budget a little further? Today, we're excited to share some groundbreaking updates on financial aid resources, including guaranteed income programs, expansive tax credits, and more. Let's dive right in. Right now, one state is considering implementing the first statewide guaranteed income program. This one is really interesting because instead of giving everyone the exact same amount of money every month, they want to tie it to the cost of rent so that each person would receive an amount based on the fair market rent for a two bedroom apartment in their area. This means that everyone would get a different amount of money and those checks would range from $958 a month to over $2,600 a month in some areas. This is the idea behind the new Evergreen Basic Income Pilot Program in Washington State. It is just a proposal right now, but they're proposing sending those checks out to 7,500 low-income people across the state. I will be watching this closely as it develops, and I will keep you updated as it moves forward. Now, of course, you've probably seen a lot of news lately about the child tax credit because a new bill just passed the House. This new proposal would increase the refundable amount of the child tax credit, which could drive up the amount of those tax refunds that are available for low-income families. If this passes, this bill will help 16 million low-income children around the country, but it's not clear if the bill will be able to pass in the Senate. Again, I'll keep you updated as that bill progresses as well. Now, as always, there are a few class action settlement checks available for claiming this week. I'm going to just really quickly go over this section, but here's what you need to know. If you bought a Juul product on or before December 7th, 2022, you may be able to claim part of a settlement. You can file your claim online at jewelclassaction.com by February 5th. If you bought certain Pine Sol products between November 2018th sorry, 2018, and November 2023, you may be eligible for some money, but you have to claim it online at pssettlement.com by February 7th. If you bought certain specialty drinks from Lion's Magnus or True Aseptics between April 2021 and October 2022, you may be able to get some cash. You have to file your claim online at specialtydrinksettlement.com by February 9th. Now, if Avantis provided a credit report about you between July 2020 and February 2023, you may be eligible for $100 or more. Be sure to claim that at Mar martinezofacclassaction.com by February 10th. If you use Facebook and you watched a video on any Flow Sports website between September 2020 and August 2023, you may be eligible for some money as well. You have to claim it at flowsportsvppasettlement.com by February 12th. Now for even more money, make sure you check out the open claims from our sponsor, Injury Claims. There are some interesting new ones opening up that may be able to help you get significant financial compensation. Right now, they're looking for people who developed cancer after taking Zantac, which is also called uh, ranitidine. Hopefully I said that right. People who experienced side effects after receiving a port catheter are also eligible for some things, or sorry, may be eligible for some things and more. They can even help you if you've experienced a personal injury, automobile accident, or if you need help appealing a disability denial. Get the details on all of this at lowincomerelief.com slash claims. Now down in Texas, veterans in Williamson County have access to a new financial aid fund. The Veterans Service Office in Georgetown just received new funding to help veterans with housing, utilities, food, and even burial costs. The new rules allow them to help all veterans who are receiving disability benefits, even if they're compensated at the 100% level. Dependents, spouses, and surviving spouses of veterans can also receive assistance. Of course, in many areas of the country, we are witnessing a significant shortage of workers in certain fields like nursing and EMTs. To fix that, Del Mar College in Texas is offering a free six-month program to train people to become EMTs. Applications are open now, and if you're interested, you need to register fast because that course starts later this month. Young people between the ages of 15 and 24 can also get extra employment support through the Summer Hires Program in Tampa, Florida. <clears throat> this program provides leadership and employment training for eligible youth who meet certain um, requirements. I believe there's income limits and other things, um, but we've got the details on that on our website. 
Now, if you'd rather start or grow your own business, be sure to check out our sponsor, Skip. They've got business grants worth up to $15,000 right now to help business owners thrive. Their current grant grants include the $15,000 Veteran Business Battle Grant, the $1,000 February Skip Grant, the $5,000 Black History Makers Grant, and the $10,000 AI Innovation Grant, which is for businesses that either are using AI or want to start using AI. You can learn more about that, all of that, at lowincomerelief.com slash skip. Oh, and here's one of my favorite finds this week. Over 60,000 free laptops are available for low-income families in Montgomery County, Maryland. Each resident can receive one, including children. To get one, you just need to be a Maryland resident with a library card. You'll need to provide proof of ID and address, and you need to make an appointment to pick up your computer. The county has done giveaways like this before, and if you've already got one of their free computers, you can't get another one. There's a limit of one per person. But if you haven't got yours yet, you absolutely need to claim one now because they've indicated that this will be the last time that they are going to do a giveaway like this. You can book an appointment on the Maryland County website, and please do that as soon as possible. Now, before we continue with the other financial assistance programs that we found this week, I just want to chat with you for a minute. I really appreciate all of the supportive comments that you guys left on our short this week. You are all amazing, and I really appreciated that, and I can't thank you enough. This job is tough. I'm not going to lie to you. I spend a lot of time researching these things, and sometimes... I stumble on things that feel important to me that I can't really share here on our main channel because they just don't quite fit. So I've decided to start putting out more videos on our secondary channel. I genuinely believe that you will find it valuable. We're going to use this space to dive a bit deeper into some of the topics that we touch on here. And I also will have a chance to share some more personal opinion-based content with you as well. It's the stuff that I'm really passionate about, but I can't always fit it into these videos because, you know, we got to keep the algorithm happy and we've pretty well defined this channel as a active, actionable source of information that can help you. So if you've ever thought, I wish Nicole would talk more about this, or I wonder what Nicole really thinks about that, then you need to go to Fast Facts by Low Income Relief and subscribe right now because on Wednesday, we're going to kick off with some content that I think you'll find very interesting. Anyway, that channel is called Fast Facts by Low Income Relief, and I hope that I'll see you there. But for now, let's dive back into those low income resources that I found this week, because I know that's what you're here for. So, did you know that Google is developing an AI that can help improve healthcare access in low income communities? I thought this was really interesting. The new system is called Amy, and it's still in testing, so it's not available anywhere yet. But the hope is that it will be able to help with diagnostics and patient conversations. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Would you trust an AI doctor with your healthcare? Let me know in the comments. I've got mixed feelings about it, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Meanwhile, a new human-based healthcare company called The Company Health has launched in Detroit. They eventually plan to expand to more areas, but this new service offers everything from 24-7 access to doctors to help applying for government benefits. They help with primary care, mental health services, and even transportation to your appointments. Everything is covered by insurance too, so there's usually no out-of-pocket costs for any of this either. Be sure to check that out if you're in Detroit, and I will try to keep an eye on it as it expands to other areas. In Alaska, the pregnancy Medicaid expansion is now available. Women can keep their Medicaid benefits for up to 12 months postpartum instead of just 60 days, which is awesome. If you need help with your utilities, there are new assistance programs available in some areas. For example, Spire Energy has a new assistance program that can help you connect with money to pay your bills. They're supposed to help you coordinate um, federal, state, and local assistance programs, which is pretty nice. In Colorado and Wyoming, residents can receive services from who receive services from Yampa Valley Electric Association may be able to receive a bill credit for the next two years. This comes from the Raise Up Community Solar Garden that they own. Any YVEA, YVEA member can receive this credit as long as the household income is at or below 80% of the area median income. You need to apply right away, though, because they are processing those applications on a first-come, first-served basis. Now, in Maine, lawmakers are considering an extension for the Arrearage Management Program. This is a really cool program that helps forgive past due balances for people who have owed more than $500 on their utilities for more than 90 days. 
<coughs> this program was initially intended to run for 10 years, but it's going to expire soon unless lawmakers take action. The current proposal would extend the program for an additional four years. In Iowa, some community action agencies are encouraging people to sign up for LIHEAP. They said there are more people eligible than are applying, and they want help getting the word out about this program. So if you're in Iowa, please contact your community action council for help getting that energy bill credit from the LIHEAP program. It can really make a big difference. Now, there are a ton of new home repair programs this week as well. In Michigan, a new home repair program in Manistee, hopefully I'm saying that right, can provide up to $40,000 toward your home repairs. In North Carolina, the Elizabeth City Habitat for Humanity can provide up to $5,000 in home repair or disability modifications assistance. In Wisconsin, the City of Merrill has a program that can provide over $100,000 in home repair assistance. It's pretty wild. There's a really cool story about it that we've shared in this week's resource recap at lowincomerelief.com news. So be sure to go check that out. And as always, you can find all the links to our original reporting and applications and everything that you need on that website. Disaster EBT replacement is available in California now for people who had their food destroyed by the recent storms. The state has expanded the deadline, so you can claim it up till February 21st, but you need to report your loss to the local county CalFresh office to request a replacement. If you live in Charlotte, North Carolina, you need to know about the city's new free Wi-Fi expansion. This program provides free internet service for low-income families and seniors. You can call 311 for details or check out the list of eligible properties. I think there's 57 properties that qualify for free internet now, which is awesome. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still getting over a cold. In Oregon, seniors who need guardianship but don't have anyone to fill that role can get help from the Central Oregon Guardianship Assistance Program. This program helps make medical, financial, and housing decisions for those who can't make those decisions for themselves. Get the details at co-gap.com. All right, now we've got other updates on transportation discounts, free college tuition programs, and more on our website at lowincomerelief.com news. But as you can tell, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today, so I'm just going to wrap up now. Please go check out our latest video for February's EBT update. There are some areas getting extra food stamps, which is awesome. And all of that is in the video. Um, I'll be back next week with more ways that you can save money and get free stuff. I'll see you soon.